In this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the different venues in which artists can market their work so that you can identify a place where you want to sell and sort of give you the benefit of my experience. And I did this as a lesson when I was teaching a gallery class at Ohlone College in Fremont. And I've shown in quite a few venues, so, and I've also taught in quite a few venues, so I thought I would just start at the top and kind of work my way down and you can identify which one will work the best for you. <clears throat> So the first thing is you have to understand uh, the differences between museums and galleries and you have to identify what they think that they're going to do for you and what their mission is. Museums and galleries have different ideas about what they believe is important to show and what's important to sell. Now there are, museums are usually not commercial spaces that are meant to help an artist sell their work. And usually you can get a show at a museum if you are someone who has some sort of reputation and you've built a reputation for yourself over the years and, and you have some critical review and some articles about yourself. And so usually top tier, what some people call blue chip artists, show at museums. And I picked probably the most uh, controversial here at the top just because I thought that it would be kind of important. So let's say that you're showing at San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. A couple of the artists who have shown at venues like that are Bill Viola, Robert Mapplethorpe, and Andre Serrano. And let me just kind of show you a little bit what they do. So Bill Viola is a video artist who's a performance artist. And what he does is he has these commercial galleries that are showing his work here. Um, and he's represented by them. He makes videos and they have usually a very strong thesis or a main idea to them. And part of what he does is he wants to excite and, and uh, provide some sort of controversy. And he wants people to engage with the works of art and deal with them in a way that might annoy the viewer, but actually make the viewer think. In doing so, what he does is he makes a commercial product, but the museums and the gallery system kind of sh sell him as he is the commodity, his artwork not isn't necessarily the commodity. And a couple of the other artists that we're looking at, like Robert Maplethorpe or Mapplethorpe, are, well, he's dead, but <laughs> he has, um, when he was showing, he's a, a gay artist who was doing some very interesting work that was kind of controversial. Some of it was very formal. And at some points, he had the benefit of being censored, uh, even in a public art space, for some of his work that was considered to be offensive. And of course, anytime you offend somebody, you get into the news, and that was good news for him and, and sold a lot of his stuff. So those are, you know, some artists, and Andre Serrano is the kind of same artist. Now, usually these kinds of shows, if they're in a museum, are visiting shows. Now, permanent ex exhibits, like, for instance, um, the San Francisco uh, Museum of Modern Art and uh, the New York Museum of Modern Art have permanent exhibits where they're showing a lot of important work that has a sort of historical appeal. And every once in a while, they'll bring in one of these sort of top shelf newer artists who are from the last 20 years and they've proven themselves in a series of sort of high class or very important upper echelon art galleries. The mission of museums usually is, they say is to educate you and to get you involved in, in rethinking what you think art is and working it out. Often a big component of that and a big component of the art world in that kind of level is controversy really helps a lot. So you wanna aggravate people, you wanna get them to say, is this art? You wanna have them question their value systems. Now there are other kinds of shows that museums do that don't have that kind of mission. For instance, uh, showing historical things like a Picasso show or a Matisse show. And some museums like the Legion of Honor and the Cantor Center, um, it are museums that have a permanent collection. They sometimes bring in something that has a proven track record that they know that their audience is gonna dig. So for instance, this show 
is a traveling show that came from the Brooklyn Museum and it's of these really great costumes. And of course, San Francisco is kind of an art center and there are a lot of arty people here and they want to look at costumes and things like that. And so that's considered what it's, it's called a blockbuster show. And so when I was a kid, I saw the King Tut exhibit. Uh, there are these impressionism shows. The Cantor Art Center is attached to, an, to um, the Stanford, uh, to Stanford College. And in some ways, it's meant to be a, a kind of teaching collection. And, but they do bring in some things that are a little bit what you might refer to as esoteric, but they have cultural significance. So for instance, um, the Arab world is a hot topic right now in the news. And so to bring in Arab photographers who are documenting what's going on in that world is a kind of important and also slightly edgy kind of show. This guy, Jacob Lawrence, is or was an African-American uh, artist who is really relevant because of the social context he's in. He kind of deals with the rights of African-Americans. He, he deals with social injustice and things like that. And if you look through here, a lot of these things are kind of um, intriguing subjects and, and sometimes are a little bit edgy, but they're usually not meant to be so inflammatory that the collectors in those museums and the people who uh, attend those museums will be offended by the subject matter. Now, most of us won't be able to get into these kinds of museums until we're um, really super successful, and I will never have a show in a museum like that. I have had shows in museums, but they're smaller art museums. Uh, for instance, um, the Los Gatos Art Museum allowed me to do an installation. It's basically, it was a converted firehouse. It calls itself a museum, but it's really a community art gallery. And a lot of the shows there are for communities. So there are a series of different kinds of museums that you can look at. And some of them are private. Uh, there's, there's actually a Pez art gallery in, uh, I, I believe in Richmond, California. There are natural history museums, there are tech museums. And a lot of these different museums will have um, calls for exhibitions and you can you can literally look those up and and go to the museum site and try to get yourself involved in them community centers are usually a very good place for the starting artist to begin and so a couple in my area are the Livermore Art Center the Pacific Art League there's also art clubs and those are good places to, to get a feeling for what it's like to exhibit your work however they're not really as viable commercially as one would hope. And a lot of people who get involved in those uh, community art centers, there's a weird social hierarchy at times, and there's a jockeying for position. And it's, it, you know, it often seems to me like the stakes are very um, low, but people act as if the politics are really important, those organizations. So I actually tend to steer clear of those. I've done a lot of judging of art shows at those places, and Usually there are people who think that they're king of the organization and there's a lot of weird disrespectful behavior and one of the things that I that I really have a negative feeling about is a lot of these places are for people who it's not always the case I don't mean to insult people but I often feel like it's it's a chance to be a big shot in a little pond probably the galleries that most of us who are want to be commercial art galleries or, or want to really sell our work are in commercial art galleries and they come at different levels. 